Well, happy Saturday, two channel listening fans. Warm welcome back. My name is Jason, and I am your host of two channel listening. It is a mighty fine Saturday, as you can see behind me here or to the right of me. We've got ourselves a certified banquet of integrated amplifiers. Now, if you didn't already click the thumbnail on what this here name's gonna be, you'd be wondering, what kind of integrated amplifier am I gonna be reviewing today? Well, if you're new to this here channel, I tell you what, I like to cover off on mostly secondhand or thirdhand products. Yeah, occasionally I will sprinkle in something brand new, but it's all about being within a budget. And being in a budget means you want the most for your dollars or how far it's going to go for really good two-channel listening. And God dang, I'll tell you what, I'm here to help you on that there journey to get you closer to the music so that you don't have to worry about all this goofy-ass darn electronic gadgetry. I could tell you which ones are pretty good and which ones are, you know, okay, and which ones are, they just need to go back to the wood chipper. So, without further ado, today it's all in what's in a name. Name, the brand, the audio brand name. It starts back with Julian Vereker in the United Kingdom. Now, Julian Vereker, he was born in 1945, and he was first and foremost an enthusiast of race cars, and he liked to tinker around in race cars, but Julian was also a big fan of playing records. Records, two-channel audio back in the late 60s. And as the story goes, Julian just wasn't happy with the kind of playback that he was getting from the records of that time, so much so that as a self-taught engineer, he started tinkering around with the innards of the integrated amplifiers and the record players and whatnot back then, and he found that he could, he could greatly improve upon the power supplies, other circuitry, maybe the transistors, other type of other type of pieces that go within the gear itself to really kind of boost what he was looking for and even even so they even founded an entire different section of the company which would be name records but that's something entirely else so 1969 julian sets his his mind to modifying existing amplifiers and products that he gets his hands on and says that I got a company here. Name, as it is called, becomes official in 1973, the very same year that they release their well-known today, their NAP 200 two-channel amplifier, a, a, um, a marquee, if you will, that is still carried over into the year 2021. 10 years later, 1983, Name comes out with its very own integrated amplifier called the Nate. Now, for 1983 or the 1980 standards, Name came out with an integrated that did not look like other integrated amplifiers, or as they said back then, those big ass receivers. The Nate integrated amplifier did not look like Cousins, did not look like anything that was coming from Trio, Kenwood, Pioneer, Sony, etc., 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 Marantz. It was a rather compact unit. That 1983 Nate was assigned a characteristic from you UK folks or an attribute saying that it provided a special rhythm and timing. And that's something that's kind of gone on through the generations or said another way, Pratt, pace, rhythm, and timing is something often associated with name products. Now, name, they're not really known for, you know, highfalutin, aesthetically pleasing products. They have been very reliable, especially from a UK standard, reliable 
audio gear that is, shall we say, and in my terms, industrial bland. Now, you can have a Nate in any color you want, so long as it's industrial black, which happens to have a little bit of a grayish tone to it, as you can see next to this piano black peach tree, or the slight, you know, the black case on, the, on my Unico P here. So, having said that, as Name has developed many different products, the Super Nate, their NAPs, their preamplifiers, many integrated systems that work with one another through their DIN connections. Fast forward to the late 2000s, maybe, and I don't know this, I cannot verify this, through those years of being kind of a, an engineer's product, being something that it looks to, they work to be neutral, they work to have a certain flavor about name that is not about flashy, it's not about, about extension, it's not about being over the top or flamboyant in how its products present themselves, especially sonically. However, for a decade, there was a product that was in, being worked in the skunk works, if you will, and it was a total all-out assault on what a top-of-line reference system could be. Now, me being in audio, the audio world for a little over 10 years as a hobbyist, it was this one particular product that even made the name known to myself, and that was the 2014 launch of the name statement. Now, this name statement, which I will show, is less than a one percenter of a product. This is a bona fide, what I would say, arguably could be the world's most expensive integrated amplifier, the world's largest, heaviest integrated amplifier, because it's technically three pieces that have to be connected together for the system to work, the statement system to work. You have two ampl amplifier sides, you have a center, a center channel or the center preamplifier piece that bolt together to create what is just over three feet tall and almost four feet wide, 580 pounds of amplification, 780 watts to eight ohms. And this is still a current product offering on their website, which is roughly $240,000, not including taxes or shipping. Good luck with the shipping. From that 2014 go forward, again, I have to say that they never really made a product that spoke to me or something that I really, I must get my hands on. Now, Given that I'm in a series of working on with mostly integrated amplifiers in stand mount speakers, I do look for particular products that fall under that $2,000 price category. And more specifically, lately, I have been on a major integrated amplifier kick. Well, so happens one of my go to audio shops is the Music Room in Colorado, and they are a distributor of Rega and also Name, among others, Peachtree. They happen to have this 5SI on an open box special. So I reached out to Ben, said, Ben, I, need, I got a slot, I need to fill it. Can you make me a deal on that name, 5SI? So we worked it out and I was able to get this 5SI, which is a current product offering. It's not a discontinued model number. It is, it is definitely a current, current offering. These retail for $1,680 and as an open box shipped to my door here in Eagle, Idaho, I was able to get it for just over $1,300. As a bargain hunter, I look, for those, I look for those sweet deals that just happen to fall into specific categories and is also a product that hasn't been overly analyzed by everybody else or something that may fall in under the radar. I go out of my way to look for the, the non-mainstream items. I go out of my way to not find items that have been reviewed 30 times by every other audio reviewer out there that's on YouTube or by the magazines. 
And this 5SI just happens to be one of those integrateds that quietly sits in the middle. So what we have here is a 60 watt per channel, 8 ohm. It does not double into 4 ohms. It only goes to 80 watts at 4 ohms. It is a very, a very slender cabinet. So while it is the traditional 17 inches across, it is 2 and 3 quarters inches tall and it is 12 inches deep. So by most standards, it's a, it's a very compact unit and it comes in at about 13, 13 pounds. I will say that I do really appreciate the name remotes. It has a, even though it feels kind of plasticky, it, it, it's built with a certain amount of weight to it and it has a solidity to it that's, that's very impressive for what it is. And even though it's totally dark, and does not have any light up functions. Uh, it's pretty intuitive for the most part. Functionally, again, it's not, there's not a whole lot of connections with this. The 5SI does not have an integrated DAC. It is very, it is very simple in its form. You have your, you have your full headphone jack here. It has three inputs with an AV bypass. What it does do is it has two sections, one specifically for the CD player where it has your basic RCA, but it has also a DIN connection for if you were to integrate some of the other name products, more specifically the companion to this is their CD 5SI, and I believe that's a $1,200 CD player that would connect directly to this through the DIN and you'd still be able to use the full function remote for both. I hope you like banana plugs because as these quirky UK products, they only will take banana connectors. There is no binding posts in the back. It's basically you just stick the bananas in the back and in typical UK quirkiness, everything is reversed. What so about that name, the 5SI. Last week I made a statement and I'm going to make it again. When I reviewed the Sierra 2EX bookshelf speakers that I have from Ascend Acoustics, and I had all three of, the, of their variety, the S1, S2, and 2EX, I made a statement last week in that video that the speakers, aside from room or room acoustics, speakers in of themselves, they are going to give you the biggest bang for the buck. They are going to have the most influence over the sonic signature that you are listening to with the playback of your favorite music. You can plug in any different type of speaker. That speaker, based on so many variables, the type of driver, the quality of the cabinets, the quality of the crossover, how it's crossed over, what frequencies it's crossed over, all those different variables, speakers will give you an incredible array of sound signature differences. So much so that that's where if you want to make a change, you want to focus on your speakers. Now when it comes to reviewing all these integrateds, again, my opinion, I've had 18 different integrators that I've personally owned. Once you equalize some of the playing field and how I equalize the playing field with all these integrators is that I use, the, I use an outboard DAC. I use my Marantz ND8006 connected via USB to my laptop so that by equalizing the playing field, Everything is fed the same type of signal from the same type of DAC and I'm using CD quality or better playback songs or bit rates. So that in of itself, we're talking about two components really. How, what, how good is the preamp side of the integrated and how good is the amp side of the equation. Now there's this thing with the name and I have to say going into this, I had a bit of a bias that was planted, the seeds were planted by all the numerous reviewers that I've read or listened to over the years and many folks that would say that name products, they have a special rhythm and timing that come to them or you know, an attribute that they, they present. 
So I have my library with the click of a button. I go through all my test songs and all I have to do is sit there, get things leveled out to where everything peaks at about 85 dB. Most of my listening's at eight, uh, around 80 dB. And I'm sitting here in my, in my listening position going, okay, I'm waiting for this rhythm and timing that is, that is associated with name. Start my first song. 11 songs later, I'm still waiting for the Pratt bus to show up and pick me up. Now, that's not to be overly critical. I was just, again, going through every song. It was one of those, for me, it was those, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. It's not there on this song. I don't hear a difference on this song. What the hell are they talking about that name has a specific pret? So as a Yankee, let me go about this a different way. Let me try to explain what I heard with very little nuance between all these integrated amplifiers equalized by an outboard DAC. Here's what the name did for me or did not do. The name did not call attention to itself. The name is, by all accounts, for you old school folks, the Steely Dan of integrated amplifiers. It is not a chart topper. So Steely Dan would, had excellent musician, musicianship. I mean, you know, Hey 19, Ricky, don't you lose that number. There were songs that did break into the top 10, but really Steely Dan, they were a middle of the road classic rock band. And this just, there was nothing that just made them exceptional. Nothing made Steely Dan exceptional. To me, nothing makes this neat exceptional. It's highs don't call attention to itself. There is no shimmer. There was no sheen. It was not forward. It was not back. It was just, it was just there playing you what's on the song itself or the artist that you're listening to. The mids. They're where you want. They're focused. They're focused on the center. I did not have a big sound stage. I did not have a deep sound stage. I did not have a shallow sound sound stage. Is this sounding familiar? It's kind of this is kind of like the Goldilocks story for the name 5SI. It does things just right to where you forget that you even have this integrated you're not focused on the integrated itself. You're focused on the music. And, you know, arguably, you'd be more focused on what your speakers are doing than on what your integrated amplifier is doing. And that's even attributed to the bass performance. So the bass, while my Unico P over here, it, which is a hybrid with a tube stage preamp in it, it has that nice bloom where there's a bit of a halo effect around each of the notes that make you go, yep, there's a bit of tube there. You know it's there because there's just a bit of exaggeration with each note, the slightest bit, and it's it has a pleasantness to it, but it fills it out a little bit more. The name, it's not lean, but it's also not class D grip on the bottom notes. So specifically with the speakers I'm breaking in, the Eric S concepts here, these performance line number ones, these are a large reflex based design speaker that in my room can give off a lot of bass. And particularly my Unico P was getting a little bit bloomy in the bass. The peach tree, very controlled bass because of the class D and did the best when it comes to these speakers. But the name, again, it's the middle of the road. You forget about it. When playing with the Sierra 2EX, I probably played the name the most with the Sierra 2EX because it did things just right with the ribbon tweeter and the way that its ported design works. For those of you who have been following me for a little while now, you know that I go out of my way to find a word to describe a particular product. The name? This is the sensible product. And what I mean by the sensible product is you probably, if you already own this, you feel pretty smart about it. You feel like you made a sensible decision. 
it is a product that fits within a certain price range. It's not, it's, it's not exaggerated. It's not over the top. It's understated if it's anything. And it's kind of like if it's kind of like a Prius owner, you buy a Prius because it's going to give you incredible gas mileage. It is very easy to maintain and it, it really, it's, it's not a flashy vehicle. It's a vehicle that's understated and goes under the radar. So it's just something that you own for a long time and it gives you what you need when you need it and nothing else. Now, me, speaking of my personality, I did forget about this integrated amplifier while playing it. I would come home and as I was breaking in mo many of my, uh, as I would come home and break in the uh, Ascend Acoustic 2EXs or I was breaking in the Eric S Concept Performance Line 1s with the name, I used it because it didn't do anything to exaggerate anything. And it became the integrated that I would play and forget about because it would help ease my mind that I wasn't going and sitting there going, oh my gosh, Amanda, did you hear that? Ooh, did you hear that? Ooh, I got to write that down. That was something that really stood out to me. Nothing at any time stood out. It was just, huh, okay, I kind of get it. But at no point did I hear this pace, rhythm, and timing thing that these are so well known about. Maybe their more expensive products give that. This one does not give that, especially in the company of these, these five integrated amplifiers. I would have to say for me personally, it's not something I'm, I would keep. It's definitely going to go up for sale for me because, you know, at the end of the day, I do like, I do like products that will call attention to themselves for something, not to be boorish or to be uh, fatiguing, but the, there needs to be something there, a little bit extra, a little bit pizzazz, a little bit of fizzle, a little bit of pop. And this is so far my longest running integrated amplifier, my Unison Research Unico P. Until two days ago, arguably my least powerful integrated at only 50 watts. And this gives me that those nice dynamics, a wonderfully large sound stage, and beautiful voicing because of that, that tube preamp section that's within it. The Peach Tree, it's a Class D amplifier, and like many Class D amplifiers, it doesn't do anything wrong either. And I would say that the two closest match to each other would be the Peach Tree Sky 125, or I'm sorry, Deco 125 Sky, and the 5S here. The other two I'm not talking about because those are for that's for future, and they're really not even close to the price class because those are truly some crazy budget finds. Nevertheless, if you like sensible, if you like, and I hate using this, and I've avoided using it through this entire re review something that's on the neutral side, this name is for you. If you're a Toyota Prius owner, this name is for you. The 5SI, it's a very sensible product. It's within the right price class, although I would say definitely buy it secondhand under $1,500 because at $1,700 with no onboard DAC and you know a little bit on the limited functionality, it kind of pushes where, where I feel it should be priced, but that's not for me to say. That's, you know, within different categories. I'm just the reviewer telling you what I personally like and what I own because everything you see here is my money. I purchased all this stuff. Nothing's on loan to me unless it's a particular vintage product I get from Dave. So having said that, the name 5SI is a very sensible integrated amplifier. It will give you most what you want. If you just want to focus on the music, forget what electronics that you have connected to it, other than needing to get a, a decent digital to analog converter. 
I could see I could see why folks want to want to buy this. It's very good on space. It's very good on efficiency. Even though it's a class AB design, at no point running it hard. There is no warmth that comes from it. The little toroidal transformer that is or not little, it's a decent sized toroidal transformer. Nothing uh, warms up. Nothing's hot. It's a cool running class AB design, and you know. It's the librarian's choice of integrated amplifiers. That's about what I could say, folks. I am super enthusiastic to share with you guys next week this OSD Nero Stream XD. I've posted it on Instagram, a few different little videos of it. Holy crap. That's all I could say about that thing. Tune in next week. And you will be amazed at what $250 can get you these days. Thank you all. I appreciate the support. And I hope that uh, a shout out to one of my viewers that suggested the Rode Wireless Go integrated mics here for $200. I'm very pleased with these, these Bluetooth mics so far. And I hope that the audio quality is vastly improved for all of you viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in.